Wallach News Network, where history happens. Hello and welcome to ZNN. I am your host, Bob Goodman. Today, we begin our three-part series on the causes of the American Revolution. America began as colonies controlled by the British. Salutary neglect allowed the colonies to party on like they were home alone. This worked for both sides. Long as England was making money and the colonists could govern themselves. Everything was all good until dad came home and started telling the kids to follow his rules. They were given a curfew, told to eat their vegetables, don't shave the dog, don't jump off the roof onto a trampoline to bounce into the neighbor's pool. You know, a regular weekend at the Goodman household. Today's God in Question, or GQ, asks what impact did the French and Indian War have on the relationship between England and the American colonies? This will help us understand the big idea, the causes of the American Revolution. Peace, or maybe not. As you may know, the United States is its own country. We're independent. That means that no other country comes in and writes our laws and tells us what to do. Our war for independence, though, was long and, and bloody and full of American patriotism and eagles and star-spangled awesomeness. Because of it, today we don't have a king, we don't drink tea at four, and our humor isn't dry and witty. But how did we get to the point of being a monarch-free, tealess, blue-white, and ready-for-anything nation? Well. It goes back to the early 1700s, when we were lowly British colonists. It all started back in 1607 with the first successful English settlement, Jamestown, Virginia, soon followed by Plymouth, Massachusetts. Over the next 130 years, cities developed, and in 1754, the entire East Coast was established as the 13 British colonies. So at this the point, British around 1750s, England and the colonies were doing pretty well so well that England pretty much gave the colonies free range to solve their own problems. Many had established their own parliament-esque government and passed their own laws on how to create and collect taxes. These political freedoms, coupled with the promise of religious tolerance, economic opportunity, and really, really cheap land, made moving to the colonies an attractive option. So much so that the colonies were starting to get a little bit too big for themselves and wanted to settle further west, specifically in an area known as the Ohio River Valley which would have been great if someone wasn't already there. The French claimed... The British were not the only ones establishing colonies. The French were starting their own colonies in the area now known as Canada. Then, the French and British started getting into arguments over territory. And then, from 1756 to 1763, the French and the Indians fought against the British and the colonists in the French and Indian War, also known as the Seven Years' War. There were a few times in history when wars are started for one reason, and this is one of them. This war was about land. Now, I'm not going to go into great deal about each battle, but know this. Colonists are terrible soldiers. Because of this, and in order to protect their colonial investment, England was forced to intervene and send their own soldiers to help fight. After a series of battles, back and forth victories between both sides, the turning point came in 1759, when the British captured Fort Duquesne, followed by Ticonderoga, and finally Montreal. This forced the French forces to surrender. As a result, France gave Canada to England, as well as removed their troops from the Ohio River Valley. And there was much rejoicing. Yay! But the rejoicing was short-lived. There were some negative effects to this war. First, with the departure of the French from the Ohio River Valley, the Native Americans in that area lost their biggest trading partners and protectors, who were replaced with colonists notorious for stealing land and starting fights. 
The natives weren't too happy about the colonists who were now invading their land in droves, and as a result, the natives had a tendency to initiate attacks on farms and communities. Second, in case you didn't know, wars are really expensive, and England had to spend a lot of money to send troops and supplies to protect and defend the colonists. This led to a predicament. England needed more money to pay for the war, so they wanted the colonists to travel less and capitalize on the raw resources that were there. But if they traveled west, they were in danger of Native American attacks, and dead colonists can't gather resources and grow British economy. So to protect them, they could send more troops, but that costs even more money. So what's a king to do? In the wake of the French and Indian War, a Native American tribal leader named Pontiac was fed up with the British military presence on his land. He and other tribes launched an attack on the British and fighting continued for the next three years. While the British government was already in the process of drafting the proclamation of 1763, Pontiac's rebellion sped up its enactment. The British needed to find a way to keep Native American tribes happy, so they drew a line that effectively cut off any westward expansion by their colonies. Native Americans would be allowed to keep the area west of the Appalachians, while American colonists had to contain their settlements to the east, rendering their land grants absolutely worthless. Adding insult to injury, any colonists already settled out west were ordered to move. You see the problem? The Americans felt the proclamation was unfair, so in many cases, they just ignored it. In a few instances, British soldiers forced American frontiersmen back across the border, sometimes burning their settlements. But for the most part, enforcement was pretty weak, and colonists still sought land across the border, even if that meant breaking the law. French and Indian war hero George Washington was one of the many colonists who flouted the law and sought to purchase as much forbidden territory as possible. In a letter to his real estate agent, he dismissed the proclamation of 1763 as a temporary expedient to quiet the minds of the Indians. In other words, Washington believed the proclamation would be repealed someday, and when it was, he wanted to already have a claim to this land. One of the unintended but most significant effects of the proclamation was the universal hatred for the British it created throughout colonial America. This is one of the earliest circumstances that created an American identity. Because for the first time, the 13 colonies had something in common. The British promised them land, and they didn't get it. If you're looking to find causes for the American Revolution, one of the earliest and least obvious is the Proclamation of 1763. King George thought he could contain the colonist settlements, but what he could not contain was their free. Well, the big idea is causes of the American Revolution. The following episodes will be known as the Don't Poke the Bear series. A larger look at the American Revolution, the bear being the United States, the poke being the King of England, just in case you didn't understand my brilliant analogy, this is Bob Goodman, and that's the big idea.